Okay. So this is problem 61 from chapter 28. One, and this problem is about the so-called uh, Helmholtz coils. And these are basically two coils. Uh, they're identical to each other. Uh, maybe not this, but just R1 or R. They have the same number of turns, the same radius. And they're separated. Their centers are separated. Their axes coincide, and their centers are separated uh, by their radii. Okay? And the same current is passing through them in the same direction. Okay? And uh, this part in my drawing is the front. Okay? So this is front. So if these currents are like this, they're going this way. Okay? Uh, so we are required to find this problem, that they are the something is to determine the magnetic field B at points X along the line joining their centers, let X equals zero at the center of one coil and X equals R at the center of the other. So let's draw this coordinate system they're prescribing. So it's gonna be like this, this is X, let's say this is Y. So this was perhaps the poor choice for the radius. And uh, this is uh, X equals R. Okay. Uh, and we are to find the magnetic field uh, along this axis. Now, to do this, I'm going to use a result that we already found from example 28.12. So this is already calculated in class, so I'm just going to use this result. This was the magnetic field for a ring, and the result was mu naught over 2 pi, uh, the magnetic dipole, uh, which is, of course, pi r squared times i, but it's not very important. <coughs> r squared plus x squared to three halves. Okay, so this is something we already found. Now, the magnetic field throughout this x-axis uh, is going to be just uh, the sum of the magnetic field contributions from these two. They are both in the same direction. So first of all, b is just bx i hat. And then dx is just d1x plus b2x, the x component of <coughs> the magnetic field coming from these two coils. Let's call this one and two. Okay. Now, I can write b1x directly. It's just this one. Okay. So, but then bx is mu naught over 2 pi mu over r squared plus x squared to 3 halves. So this one is B1x. Okay? Then I need to write an expression for this one. Now it is the same expression, but x is just shifted by r. Right? So the question is, do I add uh, or subtract capital R from the x in this expression? And the answer is you subtract it off. Uh, first let me write this down, and then I'm going to justify why that is so. Uh, mu naught, mu, this doesn't matter, 2 pi r squared plus x minus r squared to 3 halves. So if you look at their center, the center of this one corresponds to x equals 0. And it makes sense that you get some expression, mu naught mu over 2 pi uh, r to the third power. Uh, and the center of that one corresponds to x equals capital R. And again, if you substitute x equals capital R, you get the same expression. So this is the correct shifting, the shift uh, the, the, the origin for this one, you need to subtract off a capital R. Okay, uh, so this is just that. You can, of course, add these up, but uh, there's, there's, no there's not much simplification. You can take the common factor into this, but you'll still end up with a mess. Now, for part B, show that the field mi midway between the coils is particularly uniform, showing that dB by dx is zero, and d square b by dx squared. So the first and second derivative of the magnetic field with respect to x coordinate is zero at the midpoint between these two. Right. So let's erase this and try to figure this out. So I'm going to take the derivative of d dx, which is just b, of course, <coughs> along the axis. Uh, and so this is going to be mu zero mu over 2 pi, okay, so this is a common factor. Now I'm going to take the derivative of this one. The derivative of this is minus 3 halves 
that whole thing divided uh, to five fifth power, and the derivative of inside, which is just two x. Okay. And then I'll take the derivative of this expression. That looks very similar, so plus uh, minus three halves. The derivative of inside is again, uh, no, now this is two x minus r divided by this expression to now five fifth power. Yeah, I just took the derivatives. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, now what happens if I substitute, if I evaluate this, x equals r over two. Yeah, yeah like everything at x equals r over two. Now the denominators become identical, okay, because uh, r square plus x square is the same as r square plus, well, uh, minus, so r square plus uh, r over two square, and r square plus minus r over two square. And square of minus r over two is of course the same as square of r over two. So the numerators remain the same. The numerators, however, this becomes r over two, this becomes minus r over two, and everything else is identical, so these terms completely cancel each other. So when you evaluate this derivative at x equals r over two, it is identical to zero. Now what about d square bx by bx squared, the second derivative? Now you have to take this, and you have to take the derivative again. And there is no cancellation, there is no identical cancellation that you can just show uh, very easily. You actually have to evaluate. You have to substitute r over two, and just it looks like magic when you do this evaluation, but everything cancels out and you get zero indeed. And I'm not gonna do this here because it doesn't show anything interesting. And in fact, the way I would do this in this day and age is to take this expression, just this one, uh, substitute it into a symbolic computation package, perhaps SymPy, something like that, and then uh, take the derivative by computer, and then evaluate at these points. I think it's much safer and much more quicker, uh, but uh, otherwise this is just an exercise in, in mathematics. And it's an interesting result, but it ceases to be interesting once you know this result, and once you see it yourselves for once, it's just, uh, it's, there, there, there is no deep physical reason why this is so, so it doesn't uh, lead to new, new insights. But it is an interesting result, I'll argue with that, and this is why Hamel's coins are particularly suitable when you're looking at uh, uniform magnetic fields. Then uh, for part C, they're asking for a particular values and they're asking you to evaluate magnetic field and so on and so forth, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this. You can either look at the solution manual or plot the numbers in yourselves. So this will be all. <laughs>